Welcome everybody, this is Wargamer Sean, and I'm here to bring you part um, six, I believe, of uh, the Dark Angels Codex. We're going to be discussing the heavy support choices and the one Lord of War choice we're going to discuss too. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, the first uh, heavy support choice is a Ravenwing Landspeeder Vengeance. It's the other thing you can build out of the uh, Dark Shroud kit. Um, it's one of those things that GW made better. Just like uh, the um, bikes for Necrons got better, you had to keep had to have them if you wanted the Dicurion attachment. And so, of course, they went out of stock on them because they were popular because they wanted to sell the model. And right now, it's hard to get the model for these guys too. Um, I don't know if they become available again yet, but um, <coughs> excuse me, I actually still have a kit I never put together from the last edition because it. I got it, pre-ordered it, and it kind of sucks. So I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to put this together right now. And so I haven't. I'm um, just like the fighters. Um, so I probably will do the uh, the basically the Dark Shroud versus the Landspeeder Vengeance. Here's the reason why. Um, it's Bliss Skill 4, so not bad shooting. Front armor, side armor, rear armor 10, three hull points. Um, it can take a heavy – it has a heavy bolter and a plasma storm battery. Um, it can deep strike and has a raven wing um, special rules. It may replace its heavy bolter with an assault cannon um, for 15 points. So basically instead of 120, it can be 135. Now it's not a bad tank for shooting. The problem is, is that it's only front and side armor and rear armor 10. And so you really need something to protect it, potentially like the dark shroud, um, to help give it you know, shrouded so that it can stay alive more. Now it can reroll its jink. But um, with a four-up jink, half the time it's going to miss it. Anything that ignores cover is going to wreck it. Um, so I think most of the time you're going to see the Dark Shroud just simply because it does so much more. It doesn't shoot as well, um, but it's a lot cheaper and it's um, 80 points versus 120. So it's not a terrible tank. I just think in this meta it's not necessarily the best thing, in my opinion. Um, the Plasma Storm Battery, let's go to that quick. So the Plasma Storm Battery is Burst Mode, Strength 7, AP 2, Gets Hot, Heavy 3. Um, and then Charge Mode is Strength 7, AP 2, Heavy 1, Gets Hot, Large Blast. Um, I mean, so it's not terrible, but once again, I think... For the points, you can probably, probably find something more survivable as a, you know, as a shooting platform. Heck, even a Devastator squad. It's true, it's easy to kill them, but there's five of them, four of them having heavy weapons. Um, you know, you can only kill one with each shot. Potentially with a blast, you can kill more, but um, with this tank, you could potentially wreck it in one shot. Especially armor ten, pretty much anything strength four or above is can wreck it. So. Um, next is a Devastator Squad. They're 70 points. Weapon skill, bullet skill 4, strength, toughness 4, weapons 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leadership 8, 3 plus save. The veteran sergeant has 2 attacks and has a leadership of 9. Um, they come with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades, a signum for the sergeant only or the veteran sergeant. Um, they have combat squads, grim resolve, and they shall know no fear. You may include the five additional Space Marines for 14 points a model. Um, four of them can take items from the heavy weapons list. You may take an Armorium Cherub for five points, and that basically just gives you one time of re-rolling one hit, almost like a, a um, Grot Oiler. <laughs> um, so it's not bad for five points. Um, the Sergeant uh, may take melee and ranged weapons. Um, and you may take a multi-bonds for five points. They can take a designated transport as a rhino, razorback, or drop pod. Um, I think this one is a decent um, heavy weapons, uh, you know, or heavy support choice. Um, I think it's solid. You know, I think there's other things that sure can do a, a, a good job, but it's just cheap and, um, you know, pretty easy to get what you want in there. And they can take grav cannons now, which is nice. They didn't have that last edition. And as far as specialty codexes go, this is the only specialty codex that I, I think um, I'm aware of that actually has access to um, grav and uh, heavy grav cannons. Uh, m most of them now have, uh, they can take combi grav 
you know, like Bolter, the sergeants can take it, but nobody else can really take grav or um, grav cannons like space wolves um, and uh, gray knights and uh, blood angels. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I think the uh, Dark Angels needed the help. I think their codex got a lot better. I think maybe for the first time in a while they have a decent codex. I, I just think it's, uh, you know, sometimes I think there's a, a few things uh, that we'll get into that I think are a little over the top, but, you know, that's just the way GW does things sometimes. Um, Predator is the next selection. It's 75 points. It comes with an auto cannon, searchlight, smoke launchers. So Bliss skill 4, front armor 13, side armor 11, rear armor 10, 3 hull points. And it has a special rule of kill shot. If you include 3 predators, all predators in the unit have monster hunter and tank hunter special rules. Um, while they include 3 predators. So once you destroy 1 predator, that goes away. So it's okay, it's not that great. Um, you can include an additional 2 predators, so a squadron of 3, uh, 75 points a model. You can replace this auto cannon with a twin link glass cannon for 25 points, so that makes it 100. You can take heavy bolters on the side for 20 points each side, or 24, sorry, 20 points for both sides. Or you can take glass cannons for 40 points, so you get one on each side. Um, if you do the 140 point one, it gets kind of expensive. I love this tank. Uh, it's, I think it's probably nostalgic because it came out a long time ago, and it's one of the first few tanks they came out with besides the Rhino and the um, Land Raider. Uh, it's one of the first ones that they came out with that was a gun tank besides Land Raider. And so I've always loved it, but I just think in this edition, I don't think it's the best thing for its points. I like it. I mean, but... The problem with tanks is that, you know, you get one good shot or one lucky shot and you blow it up. You've lost all, you know, all three heavy weapons versus a Devastator squad. Let's say you have four LAS cannons. Yes, you can kill an individual. And yes, you might get lucky with a blast shot that might, you know, do four wounds and kill all the squad. And that one blast shot might have only done one hull point to the Predator. But for the most part, you know, people are firing Meltas or Grav or stuff like that. Um, you know, I think this has a better chance of getting killed to some degree um so let's move on to the next one we've got the whirlwind which is 65 points um that's front armor and side armor of 11 rear armor 10 three hull points plus skill four it's got the whirlwind multiple missile launcher searchlight smoke launchers it's got suppressive bombardment um while the loot the whirlwind squadron includes three whirlwinds um you the launcher has the pinning and shred special rules um, like the Space Marine Codex, um, you can have up to two additional war wounds for 65 points a model, um, and uh, they may take items from the Dark Angels vehicle equipment list. Now, depending on how you're building your list, and this is true for even the Space Marine Codex, but uh, the whirlwind has gotten pretty cheap on um, these newer codices, and I think it's a very good choice. Um, having shred and pinning is good. And honestly, it's, uh, let's see, 130, uh, 195 points for three of them. It's a little bit of a point investment, but it's pretty good because you've got Barrage, Large Blast 3, they can ignore cover, and has Pinning and Shred. That's pretty good. Um, I think this is worth a look, and I think it's actually good. There's a formation later on, or I think that might just be Space Marines that uh, helps them. I'm not sure if it is in this one. I apologize. Um, but I think the whirlwind is worth looking at, even just one of them. Um, it's very cheap, and if it, even if sometimes you have to look at things as an annoyance for the uh, your opponent, and if it makes that 65 point model takes a a lot of attention. Let's say they drop drop pods down on turn one, and they destroy that whirlwind. You're like, oh, what a bummer, you know, I I lost that 65 point model, but at the same time, you lost that 65 point model. What does that mean? That means that let's say they dropped a squad in, an assault squad or um, a, 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 uh, a regular attack squad and blew it up with melted guns or let's say a grass centurion squad went after it it came down to drop pot and killed it. That's a lot of points tied into destroying a 65 point model. That means the majority of your army is still intact and the next turn they can turn around and deal with what dropped down. Hopefully they can and they should have the strength to do it. So I like the whirlwind and it's taken a really long time playing this game. I used to be one of those that got upset every time I lost. I'm like, man, what a bummer. I don't want to lose anything. And you'd start out the game, battle in the game and you're like, 
I love all these you know guys I put a lot of time into painting in these models and I want to lose any of them. Well, you kind of have to get past that because, frankly, 6th and especially 7th edition is a bloodbath, ladies and gentlemen. Both sides tend to have heavy casualties. By the end, there's not usually a lot left unless you just really get smeared by an opponent. It's pretty rare that that happens. And so you can't be attached to not losing something. And the way you have to think about things is, okay, they, they killed this thing, but it was cheap, and I have more points to spend to kill their stuff. Or if they leave it alone and ignore it, now you're blasting them with something that ignores cover. Um, now, some could argue the Thunderfire Cannon might do a better job um, because it has so many more blasts um, that can ignore cover. And that's true, but you got to look at the point level. And Whirlwinds are cheaper than, um, than um, your Tech Marines. Uh, sorry, and, and the, um, the, the can Thunderfire Cannons. And so it depends on where you want to put your points. And so I think sometimes the Whirlwind is a valid choice. Sometimes you want that Thunderfire Cannon. Sometimes you want both. Um, but I think the Whirlwind is actually a good tank. I, I sort of got a little long-winded on it, but I do think it's worth a look for people, you know, picking it up or thinking about playing. Um, but once again, I've always liked the Whirlwinds too. I remember when you, GW put an article out and Games Work or White Dwarf on how you could kit bash your own thing to add to the to the Rhino chassis to make your own Whirlwind because they didn't make a model for it. Um, and then they sold the extension kit, so you'd buy that separately besides the Rhino to make them. But now they have their own kit. Um, next is Vindicators. Uh, they're 120 points. They're both skill 4, front armor 13, side armor 11, rear armor 10, 3 hull points. They have a demolisher cannon, searchlight, and smoke launchers. Uh, they don't come with the siege shield, uh, just like Chaos Space Marines now. Um, it doesn't come automatically, so you have to pay 10 points for it. So they don't come automatically. Something to think about when you're buying this stuff. And an opponent to make sure they're being honest when they make sure they pay the points for it. Some people will just put the, um, uh, the um, basically the... Uh, dozer blades on there instead because it's a cheaper upgrade it's five points but the sea shield doesn't just ignore things but i think most of the time people just tend to do the um, dozer blades now because it's cheaper um, they can take a squadron of up to two more vindicators at 120 points each if you take three of them and they have all three um, on their turn they can fire a single line breaker bombardment instead of firing normally if so uh, you use a large um, ap apocalyptic blast and gains the ignore cover special rule. That is phenomenal, um, and it looks great on paper. It looks like game breaking, but it, to be honest with you, when you think about it, if you're playing someone that has this, you're hopefully either deploying in a way that they're not going to be able to take advantage of that because it's a 24-inch range, and if they can, if you know they're going first, so they're setting up first you put everything the hell away from that, those things. Um, now, if they're in the middle of the board, it's harder to get around that. You may have to try to split up and null deploy as much as you can and just eat it the first round. But the minute you can, you take at least one of those tanks out. Because once one of those tanks is gone, then the threat isn't as great. Um, hence the reason, none of the reason why I don't think you're going to see it as much is that people are going to target and take out one of those tanks right away, and then it becomes a lot less threatening. So um, I think it's good. I just don't think you're going to see it that much just because I think it's easy enough to counter it. But who knows? I, you know, Maybe with time you will see it. But I, I don't think it's going to be one that you're going to see a ton of. Um, next is the regular Land Raider, 250 points. It's uh, front arm, or Bliss Skill 4, front side rear armor 14, 4 hull points, twin link heavy bolter, two twin link las cannons, searchlight, smoke launchers, Assault Vehicle, Power of the Machine Spirit. Um, so it doesn't have any of the Dark Angel special rules. It has a transport capacity of 10 um, and uh, has one access point on each side and one at the front. It can take a multi melter for 10 points and can take items from the Dark Angel Vehicle Equipment List um, just like any of the vehicles can. Um, I might as well cover the other ones. The next one's a Land Raider Crusader, which is 250 points. It's got a 16 model capacity. Same stats as the other one, Bliss Skill, front side, rear armor, four hull points. It has a twin linked assault cannon, two hurricane bolters, frag assault launchers, uh, smoke light, and smoke launchers. Um, so it's got the frag assault launchers too, so it kind of help with Terminators being able to charge through difficult terrain and, and being able to go at initiative if they charge out of the vehicle. 
Um, it has a cell vehicle, power of the machine spirit. Um, the next one is also 200, sorry, this one's 240 points. Sorry, I thought it was the same, it's not. Um, the Land Raider Redeemer is same stats, both skill four, front side rear armor 14, four hull points. Assault vehicle, 12 model capacity versus 16 and 10. They all look the same. I don't know how all of a sudden, just by doing different weapons, you suddenly have more transport capacity. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, has this twin linked assault cannon, two flamestorm cannons, frag assault missile, or frag assault launcher, searchlight, smoke launchers, assault vehicle, power of the machine spirit. Can take a multi melter for 10 points, which they all can do, and take vehicles from the equipment list. Um, the problem with the Land Raiders, they're cool, um, their formation. Uh, I guess I don't think these guys have it. They, I'll check. I don't think they do, but um, the Space Marine one does. But they're just so many points in a vehicle that honestly, with vehicles, can be popped in one shot. And so most people don't invest the points into something so fragile, especially more than one. Um, uh, I think the Crusader and the regular Land Raider are the ones that you tend to see the most because the Flamestorm one is harder to, you know, utilize all of the flame templates to actually uh, hit with things and you're getting close and usually by that time it's dead um, so I think that's the one you'll see probably the least probably why they made it a little cheaper but uh, I think is to be honest uh, I think the Land Raiders in 7th edition and more well 6th edition for sure it was too easy to kill them but um, I think in 7th um, edition it's a little better but I don't think you're going to see a ton of them running around, especially in competitive lists. Now, your local meta, depending on where you're playing, you're playing for fun, you might see it. And to be honest, you know, um, it used to be good because a lot of people would have stuff for dealing with light vehicles um, or medium vehicles, and like up to armor 13, and for your troops. And so a lot of times people didn't have very many or maybe had one squad to deal with something that was armor 13, 14. And it was really hard. Um, when they used to have the uh, Land Raider Crusader used to have the Blessed Hall for Black Templars, which you couldn't, you know, it was like the Ceramite armor, but it was armor 14. It was just ridiculous. It was so hard to kill those things. It's like the old monoliths. But they aren't they aren't affected by all these things now. And so Melta gets a 2d6, Lance makes it um, a 12, uh, you know, when it's shooting at it. So it's easier to kill it now. You know, a lot of people used to think, hey, great, this is great. It's armor 14. People aren't gonna be able to deal with it. I kill the one squad that can, and it basically got an invulnerable tank till the end of the game that just goes around, and does whatever the hell it wants to. And and that was true. Uh, I would say all the way until undef six because uh, Lords of War weren't really introduced into common game until end of six when escalation came out excuse me a second but um now with escalation especially with imperial knights kind of changing everything i would plan on most armies out there having something probably more than one thing to be able to deal with big tanks because they have to deal with super heavies and gargantuan creatures it's just a fact of life it's the way the game is gone and so your land raider isn't as good anymore as a super heavy vehicle or tank, and so it's it's much it's much more likely it's going to get one shotted or two shotted and be dead and not take all four hull points. And most of the time, your opponent's going to have something to be able to deal with it. Potentially, if someone's playing pure things like um, Dark Eldar, they may have a little bit harder time with it. Uh, being a Dark Elder player myself, uh, you know, aside from Hayware and, you know, this, uh, some people argue, I mean, some people will take a lot of Lance things because uh, it depends on what you're running. If you're running a lot of Raider spam, you're going to have a lot of Lances. But um, the way a lot of people and competitively have gone to running it is a lot of like Venoms and um, or monstrous creatures um, like the, the, you know, Talos or the jet fighters and so you just don't tend to have that ratio of lances to be able to deal with armor 14 like a lot of other armies do but i would play them you know most people aren't just playing dark elder anymore in tournament scene most other armies almost everybody else has a way to deal with super heavies um if you're tuned into our podcast um the uh, uh mysterious uh, terrain um podcast that i do with um dr z we went through a whole every army that currently has a codex and went through how you could deal with gargantuan super heavy vehicles so you can tune into that and take a listen to that but my point is i, I don't think land raiders are all that in a bag of chips anymore honestly sorry 
Um, they're cool vehicles. Well, they look like a box, but I think they're still cool. Uh, I had one of the, a couple of the original ones. They didn't quite look the same as they do now, but I'll have to make a video of that sometime. Um, the last one, we're going to go over the Lord of War, which is Azrael. He's 215 points, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, um, and strength toughness 4, wounds 4, initiative 5, attacks 4, leadership 10, 2 up save, and he's got Mastercraft and Combi Plasma, um, and bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades, and he has, excuse me, the Sword of Secrets, which is plus 2 strength, so it's going to be strength 6, AP3 Mastercrafted melee. Um, and then he's got the Lion Helm, um, and the Lion Helm is carried by the Relic Bearer. Uh, it gives him a 4-up invulnerable save um, in all models in his unit and any vehicle he's embarked on. He's got a 4-up invulnerable save. Um, he's got Deathwing, Feel No Pain, Grim Resolve, Independent Character, Master Tactician. Um, so an army that includes Azrael adds 1 to the CZ Initiative roll. He's got the rights of battle. All friendly models of Dark Angel faction can use Azrael's leadership while in place of their own. Supreme Strategist, when determining Warlord traits for Azrael, choose any trait from the Dark Angel's Warlord trait table. He just gets to pick one. Um, the problem I... I mean, at least he's got an invuln save. The problem that I have with him, especially depending on how your local meta is playing, our, our uh, local group is... Um, sorry, I'm kind of shifting the thing here um our local meta our local group has decided that we're going to keep with the escalation rules right now as far as awarding victory points for every three hull points or wounds you do to a lord of war he's got four wounds so he's going to grant an extra victory point besides kill point or warlord trait depending on if he's your warlord um, for his point value and only being ap3 with his close combat weapon and having a combi plasma you know, it's only a one shot um, with the plasma. I don't think he's that good, and I don't think he's that worth it. The other problem is he doesn't have Eternal Warrior, and so he can get instant kill with anything that's strength eight. Um, for Lord of War, that's pretty harsh. Um, he's, I mean, Gazgul's at least got Eternal Warrior. He doesn't even have an invuln except for his Wog turn. This guy has an invuln save, but he can be instant killed pretty easily. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, 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 used, I liked Azrael last edition, especially he made both Ravenwing and Deathwing troops, but that's gone now. The only stupid codex that kept troops with modifying something like the commander on a bike is Space Marines for some reason. Um, nobody else got it. I don't get that. I'm not bitter. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I think, you know, uh, we're going to go over the detachments in the next video, but I think... Um, you know, kind of looking through this, uh, you know, I think Dark Angels is a competitive army and build. It just depends. I think it's more restricted to bikes and fast troops versus Terminators. I think you can still do the, the Green Wing or the regular, you know, tax squads, but I think Space Marines in their, you know, in the regular Space Marines in their detachments actually can do it a little bit better because they can take Grav Centurions and, and uh, Dark Angels can't. Um, but next video, we will go into the different formations, and then we will also go through the final thoughts, and that'll be the end of our Dark Angel series. I'm sorry it's taken so long. I've been redoing them because I've had more experience with them and kind of felt like it was needed to kind of redo them as, uh, aside from my first assessment, which I didn't think was quite as accurate as, as I've figured out over time. So this is Wargamer Sean. Until next time, keep on wargaming and take care, okay? Goodbye. 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 Bye-bye. Goodbye. See ya. Bye for now. Bye for now. Goodbye. I like bottoms.